Ladies and Gentlemen, Colleagues, Friends, this session deals with heritage management, uh, with museums and the challenges of archaeological outreach in the 21st century. It is about public funding and other forms of financing archaeological sites, conservation works and research. Conservation, preservation and maintenance of sites is always quite expensive. Excavation itself is expensive research as well, but the ongoing costs for an archaeological park or a small museum and its maintenance are often higher. In some countries, with a lot of tourism, archaeology is an important issue and somehow part of the country's identity. In Austria, this is not the case, I would say. And at times where financing is getting narrower, it is becoming more and more difficult to justify those expenses. To attract more and more people to get visitors to sites and museums is thus important. Because of this, archaeological parks and reconstructions uh, of prehistoric and Roman buildings are booming somehow. And I show some examples from Austria, from Canontum, Villa Urbana, where several reconstructions have been built in the last, actually in the last 20 years, but in the last 10 years, quite a lot. Examples from Austria from southern Austria and here from Hungary, uh, from the Temple of Isis. Sometimes these reconstructions are somehow connected to experimental archaeology. For example, the Roman heating system in the bath in Canuntum. And from the scientific point of view, a lot of details are quite challenging. Of course, it would be very interesting to discuss these reconstructions in the light of the Venice chart as well. Anyhow, marketing aspects become more and more important. Archaeology is seen as, a, as an adventure, it's a slogan that is used in this respect. And studies show that really a lot of people are interested in archaeology and many people would like to gain an insight into archaeology. Uh, this is just another example from southern Austria, from Styria, where I'm from. Uh, my colleague, Raimund Karl, made an inquiry to uh, the extent how many people are really interested in archaeology in Austria. And if you see here uh, how many people would like to participate. 18% would like very much and 40% would like to participate somehow in archaeology. And how many people are interested? 8% highly interested, 18 or even uh, interested and, and 34%. Uh, also interested. So there are also companies that try to make money out of this uh, interest. They offer one week participation at an excavation or one weekend, this is called Dirty Weekend, for volunteers, people who are interested in archaeology and who always wanted to take part at an excavation. I show here just the, the website from Big Wench in Great Britain, but also in Austria there's one um, Non-profit association, Arge Archaeologie, and actually we have quite good experiences with this uh, kind of voluntary work. Participants pay not, not uh, little money to work as a volunteer at the excavation. The problem that results on this emphasis on adventure and on the attempt to attract more and more visitors is that marketing aspects become more important, whereas scientific findings and research fall behind. This is the, the danger, of course. So it has been of observed that there is a kind of change of the museum as educational institution to a place of entertainment, something quite problematically. Of course, uh, it is a danger that could lead to a staged world, an inszenierte Erlebniswelt, lacking the authenticity. The question. So my, my paper is primarily about the situation in Austria, uh, how things changed and how. Uh, Things could change. Are there paradigmatic changes in Austria's heritage management is the question. Um, first, just to about the term paradigmatic change is a term that was used by Thomas Kuhn, philosopher of science, who studied the scientific process and how knowledge is gained. A paradigmatic change is, as he said, when one explanatory model or one theory is replaced by another better theory. This is a scientific revolution in his words, he said, speaking mainly about natural sciences, of course. What happened in Austria? Uh, uh, the important or the interesting thing is that two important international charters were ratified just two years ago or three years ago. In the meantime, the uh, Valletta Convention 
a very important step, the European Convention on the Protection of Archaeological Heritage. Uh, very important uh, convention, the Article 5, in my opinion, is one of the most important uh, thing. It says, uh, it's important to raise public awareness and accessibility to archaeological sites, as well as to publish results of archaeological excavations and prospections. And the importance of integrated protection of archaeological heritage uh, was a very important point in the Article 5. And together, so, so it was just ratified two years ago in Austria, and together with this convention, another important convention, the FARO Convention, the Council of Europe Framework Convention of the Value of Cultural Heritage for Society. Um, in the article uh, uh, 11, it says, in the management of the cultural heritage, the parties undertake to encourage non-governmental organizations concerned with heritage conservation to act in the public interest. So two very important uh, conventions were ratified just three years ago. The question is what will happen? Actually, uh, I have to say several requirements of the Valletta Charter and the Faro Charter had already been implemented. I would say some of them. Uh, one paradigmatic change in heritage management that took place already quite some time ago. Some maybe will say it hasn't happened enough. Was uh, the realization that public awareness is quite important for the protection of sites. And in order to raise public awareness, it is possible to commun or it is necessary to communicate, to publish, and to tell the public why the protection of monuments is uh, important, even if there is not, nothing to see because the monument is still under the earth. In this respect, the publication of all sites that are under protection in a GIS GIS system that is open to the public, open access, absolutely, was a small revolution. Um, it happened first in Germany, in the German-speaking area in 2007, and several years later in Austria too. Um, and in the meantime, in all the federal states of Austria, such GIS systems uh, are public. And the, all the protected sites, the listed monuments are there uh, and it's open access. Problem is, uh, of course, that uh, just maybe 10% of all the uh, monuments are protected and just the protected sites are here inside this GIS system. But in, and the other problem is that not in all federal states it's uh, implemented in the same way. But it was a small revolution because before there were a lot of people that said that this would be like an instruction book for pot diggers and for illegal excavations. But fortunately the opinion prevailed that it is necessary to tell the public which sites are under protection. And it's also so important in Austria because building authorities at the municipal level and they need to know about the sites. One difficulty in Austria is the structure. Um, the federal structure, uh, there's the state who is responsible for conservation and protection of sites and has its federal heritage authority, the Bundesdenkmalamt. And there, then there are the federal states, like Styria, Austria, where I'm from, that also have some important com competencies and also their own laws, for example, about the protection of buildings in historic city centers and the regional planning is in their competence, land use planning, and this is one of the very important points in the Valletta Convention. And then there are the municipalities, cities and villages that have a very important competence. They have the building authority. The building authority, of course, is one of the most important uh, actors in this respect. Financing of archaeology and heritage management in Austria is also fragmented uh, in between these uh, different players, I would say. And heritage sites are run primarily by municipalities and federal states, which often causes a kind of dilemma because municipalities and federal states uh, have primarily a focus on touristic needs. They want reconstructions, for example, uh, whereas the authority, the state, always is concerned with the protection itself, the physical protection of the monument, and mainly sees the problem that these touristic aspects causes a harm to the original substance. So there are ongoing conflicts between these two parties, I would say. As I said before, the publication of protected sites in GIS systems 
and several other changes had happened even 10 years ago before the ratification of the Valletta Charter. So this ratification until now didn't uh, cause paradigmatic changes. Um, some other important changes had taken place uh, about 10 years ago, the liberalization or establishment of an archaeological market. Just 10 years ago, heritage authorities accepted finally that rescue excavations have to be done primarily by private companies, NGOs, non-profit associations. So it was a liberalization or establishment of an archaeological market, or establishment of a commercial archaeological sector. In the meantime, 95% of excavations are done by Museums, NGOs, uh, non-profit associations. Around, I, I think it were about 760 excavations in the last year, so quite a lot. And since this liberalization, the Heritage Authority itself acts primarily as authority, but doesn't excavate itself anymore. It gives permits for the excavations. And it functions primarily to control, supervise if excavations are done in accordance to the guidelines for the archaeological excavation. So it publishes the guidelines, uh, here are the guidelines for the archaeological uh, excavations. So, so excavations are done primarily by companies, non-profit associations, small museums and NGOs, whereas research uh, institutes and universities uh, also conduct research excavations, of course. The promotion of public awareness, which is, in my opinion, uh, also very important, is, uh, has to be done primarily on a regional level, so by institutions that are somehow close to the citizens and in close contact are the municipal museums and non-profit organizations. Citizen science is an often used term in this respect, uh, and the possibility of participation in cultural process, a central claim of FARA, Convention, the inclusion of civil society, and of course, there has a lot to be done still in Austria. Something else that's new in Austria um, it's, the, oh, it's the assessment of the Eingriffserheblichkeit that has to be done. It's, it's a new invention just two years ago. I think um, it's a kind of um, assessment um, of the relevance of intervention of archaeological excavation is the extent to which the gain of knowledge that is expected by excavation prevail over this destruction um, that happens during excavation because uh, of course it's just uh, just for research excavations for invasive methods it is connected with another paradigm in the german-speaking world that has uh, uh, criticized a lot of times and uh, observed by my colleague raymond karl that the protection of monuments has absolutely priority compared to the research. So the problem is when protection ends in itself, if monuments are protected because they are monuments and not because they are a source for historical research. But the uh, paradigm can be explained by the fact that excavation always causes some destruction, a fact that was emphasized already in the Charter of Lausanne, where Article 5 says, must be an overriding principle that the gathering of information about the archaeological heritage should not destroy any more archaeological evidence than is necessary. And the, uh, this assessment of the Eingriffserheblichkeit that I mentioned is somehow uh, this scientific evolution of the significance of the site that uh, is mentioned here in the Charter of Lausanne. A crucial claim in the Valletta Convention was integrated conservation of archaeological heritage. There is the integration of archaeological considerations in development plans and development policy. This claim had also been part in the chart of Lausanne, where Article 2 says, policies uh, for the protection of archaeological heritage should constitute an integral component of policies relating to land use, development and planning, as well as of cultural, environmental and educational policies. In Austria, such development plans, land use plans, are called Flächenwidmungspläne. They are the most important tool for the building authority on the municipal level, because this is something on the municipal level of uh, villages. 
Um, and in this plan, the areas that are under protection are recorded, as well as the area that are uh, seen as archaeological reserves. So it's also something that's mentioned in the Valletta Charter, that uh, all these protected areas, like here two examples, protected areas are listed here in these development plans and as well the archaeological reserves. The problem again is that in nine different federal states, different systems, so we have nine different uh, systems how these uh, areas are recorded. The structural problem uh, is again that the federal structure of Austria, um, it needs much better connection uh, between the building authority on the municipal level and the heritage management, uh, that it means uh, between municipalities and the state. And concerning the participation of the public, a uh, central claim of the uh, FARO Convention, uh, the state has to provide resources that make it possible for volunteers to really take part in heritage management. I think there's a need of archaeologists whose job is just to work with regional correspondence or on a regional level. The interesting thing is that the uh, ratification of two charters, Valletta and Faro, was just two years ago. Several paradigmatic changes had happened already uh, 10 years ago, but there's uh, still lots to be done. Thank you for your attention.